Now, coming up in the next hour, Michael Gallagher on the Good Friday Agreement and how this year also marks 25 years since the death of his son Aidan in the Oma bomb. The fallout from Donald Trump's court appearance and will she have to give that $2 million ring back? Rupert Murdoch's two-week engagement is off. And also, if you have any questions about osteoporosis, Dr Maura Finn will be with us later on and you can text us 51551. Airports across the country are expecting a strong boost in passenger numbers over the Easter bank holiday weekend. But while the pandemic related issues with travel have now eased, the knock on impact of strikes loom large over the coming months. And here to talk us through how to prepare for all eventualities is Owen Carey of Air and Travel magazine. Owen, thanks very much for joining us this morning. This is the time when we all start thinking about getting to the to the airport and going on holidays. And just to start uh, with travel insurance, because no one can ever really predict what goes wrong. I know lots of people take a risk and they don't take out travel insurance. Is it best, though, to do it, just to, to, to suck it up and take out a policy before you go? Good morning, Claire. Always best to have travel insurance. Never has it been more important. Uh, pandemic has taught us that. But the pan- post-pandemic has also complicated the issue a little bit because there's a lot of purely health policies out there. Uh, Obviously, the most profound example of that is the EHIC card. It gives you health insurance right across Europe. um, And there are health providers giving you health insurance wherever you travel around the world. A lot of people happy to go with that. But the travel insurance is a lot more complicated than that. Health is only one aspect of it. And getting you home, if you have a health issue, isn't covered by health-only policies. So travel insurance never is important, but it isn't that expensive. Mm -hmm. Well, you can can decide how much you're going to pay because the different policies on offer will be at different prices. But you need to check out what exactly you're being covered for. Mainly three, three areas need to be covered. Your health, the health, the basic health uh, end of it, either the health insurance might look after that, the travel insurance give you a discount if you have your, your private policy or your health insurance policy uh, from an Irish provider. The second bit, uh, very important as well, is the, the uh, lost baggage theft um, when you're abroad. If, you're, if something's stolen, your passport goes missing. It is a big drama. Be where the most uh, valuable item most of us have is the one I'm talking to you on now is the phone. Uh, you need separate device insurance for that. The third area, and it's not covered by general uh, travel policies, is disruption. That's been a big deal, uh, pandemic, and it's also a big deal during the strikes that you're talking about. Uh, it doesn't cost an awful lot extra in an annual policy, but that gets you over the hump if uh, flights are cancelled or delayed. The airline uh, is under an obligation to fulfil its contract to get you where you want. But in some cases, that mightn't be the same day. It might even be uh, for three or four days. So it's a very, very important aspect of insurance to add to it. The, um, the, what happens is people by, are led by, flight, by price comparison websites into the cheapest policy it barely, it, sometimes the cheapest policy just covers the basics. I've seen policies that don't even cover theft. And when your bag is stolen somewhere in an airport, you're, you, um, that can cause problems. There's also the big thing last summer where a lot of bags went missing. Yes, and also if we're looking at a summer where there will be strike action and that will lead to delays and even cancellations, you need to be covered. I mean, how much responsibility does the airline have to get you on hol- out there, outbound or back home when strikes happen? Most important, the airline is not an insurer of last resort. Some people are assuming that the airline will compensate them for the lost concert ticket or the match they, they missed. Uh, that's not the case. That's what travel insurance is for. The airline has a, an important responsibility. That's to get you to where you're supposed to go within the re- a reasonable time. They're uh, regulated by that, by EU 261. But the reasonable time means the next available flight Sometimes that mightn't be, if you miss a connection to a a third country, that might be a bit more complicated. They also uh, give you, the travel insurance will also give you the option of booking on rival airlines. Uh, That's uh, 
you know, it, uh, different court decisions have come different ways on that, but that's not an automatic consumer right. Mm-hmm. What about when an airline tells you your flight is delayed by five hours due to circumstances outside of our control? What, what are your rights in that instance? You, there's a, co- a code of compensation. Uh, airlines are s- supposed to pay compensation. Uh, they do pay compensation under EU 261. But there are three exclusion clauses that you alluded to there. Outside our control can be weather event. It can be a safety issue if a plane is unable to take off because of a safety issue. And it also can be strike action. That's been contested, by the way. Wildcat strikes things are, are a particular uh, bone of contention for airlines. But the, those three areas, they exclude you from uh, the whole, uh, exclude the airline from being responsible for compensation. What they don't exclude the airline from is that they have the responsibility of getting you from A to B, not an airport 100 kilometres where you're from, where you're supposed to be, but exactly to where you're supposed to go. OK, now people will remember back to last summer when bags were going missing or or frustratingly, if people had a tracker on their bag, they could see that it was sitting in Dublin Airport, but they couldn't get access to it. So, Owen, when that happens, if your bag is lost or delays, what, what, what type of compensation can you get? The compensation is pitiful, Claire. Mm-hmm. The compensation is agreed under the Montreal Convention and it doesn't really go beyond about €2,000. They have a separate, uh, separate unit of currency specifically for this. The, that means that uh, anything electronic or whatever won't be covered. Again, travel insurance will uh, top that up. Uh, and there, a bag used to be counted as gone missing after 14 days. It's got uh, a little bit more complicated because some of the bags from last summer are still showing up. They particularly, they were lost at four or five of the big hubs across Europe, Heathrow, uh, Toronto, in, in North America, Frankfurt, Paris, Amsterdam, and some of them are still showing up. That's but amazing, isn't back, it? I, I mean, I thought, I thought you get to a certain point where everybody just gives up, but are they actually getting bags back to people now? I thought I knew the aviation industry very well. I still get surprised by some of the little things that have been turned up uh, in the, even in the last two weeks, a bag that went missing last September. Uh, they, they, the baby buggy didn't, but it showed up in Hamburg where the couple hadn't even transferred right. through. Oh, but all of that's going on. Uh, when we get back to a degree of normality, a bag is written off. Most, of it, most bags are found within 48 hours and delivered to wherever the uh, person is. And we saw the, you know, the, the airlines and the, the four people who handled bags in, in Dublin, uh, their two airlines and two handling companies. We saw their vans running up and down the country last year with bags uh, almost every day. They have to hire in extra courier services. But uh, it normally turns up within 48 hours. After 14 days, they declare it lost forever and they entitle you to compensation. But as I say, the compensation is very low. Uh, th- that's why travel insurance is very important there as well. Because mm-hmm, it's horrible when a bag goes missing. A bag went Absolutely missing at mine horrible. about 20 do, years do not, ago. I'm still sore about it, Owen. I'm not over <laughs> it yet. <laughs> do not pack anything you don't expect to lose. Yes. That's really the, the law. When it goes down that carousel and it bumps out of sight, uh, you know, be, be relieved if you see it again. Great advice. Now, another area where people will run into trouble with often is on car hire because you're paying for all of the extras that you have to pay for and then they say you have an option to pay an excess on the policy and that can seem really expensive and it can drive it into a price territory where you did not want to go should you take it. It's almost on the scam level when you, particularly North America, particularly the United States, when you land, you've paid for your car, you've paid for all the insurance, everything's covered, and it is. Don't be, don't be fooled. It, every, you have the, uh, the most basic level of car, of, of car hire insurance covers you. But these guys on the desk are paid commission for upselling, uh-huh. and they will terrify you. Uh, you know, somebody, I know, you know, farmers who are great at dr- driving a deal on their sheep or their cattle who've been basically swindled when they arrive at the car hire, hire desk. They're out of their depth. They're told, oh, well, the, you know, awful things happen here. Uh, your excess is, what is, €2,000. You'll have to pay that. But And they pay uh, overpriced excess insurance. Now, there is a way out of this, um, a really great way out of this, and that's that uh, all of the major uh, companies that do travel insurance 
also do a policy where your excess is covered. Um, you know, it doesn't pay for your car insurance, but it covers for all those little bits, you know, the little prying, the wing mirror that comes off, and then you're charged because they, they charge you for the car hark lost for mm-hmm. the two days it takes to replace it. All of that is covered. It's a very useful policy, and it doesn't cost very much. It costs uh, maybe 15 euro for the year. It's and also- it's a very useful one to get away from those that sort of upselling that goes on at a desk. It's also good advice to take a picture or a video of the car before you drive it away from the car Without hire place. Fail. You know, people have been hit with uh, small prangs that were already on the car. They didn't hit anything. And when they get back, they're told, oh, you caused this. Uh, if you have the photograph, it's important. Another important thing, and it goes back to the luggage, take a photograph of your contents. Um, you know, if, they're, if they're, you're going to insurance companies afterwards, if you have a photograph of your packed suitcase, mm-hmm. uh, it also helps. God, it'd make you want to stay at home. Owen, thanks very much. <laughs> Owen. Do not stay at home. <laughs> get out there. <laughs> thanks very much, Owen. Owen Carr. There. Let's go to the newsroom now and to Brian Jennings.